In just 15 minutes, anyone can have fame, said a young Andy Warhol, no stained white with cocaine. This postmodern preacher could never have known that somehow Mike Lazza would take up his throne. In the year of our Lord, 1958, in some house in Atlanta, a woman's water breaks. A cartoonist is born, just one who don't draw. A producer, creator, who didn't make senior prom. A high school dropout didn't get his degree, but all of us know no one's too dumb for TV. In 1992, Jane Fonda's main beau gave Mike Lazo a job programming all of the shows and a new little network Ted had just acquired. The money was cheap, the idea inspired. Take all this old stuff from MGM UA and rerun their material except on TV today. They had in their archives a whole load of cartoons, from the Jetsons to Flintstones, this seemed a real boon. Imagine how cheaply a channel could run on prefab material for daughters, parents, and sons. So Ted said to Mike Lazo, who grew up on such things, Lazo, my boy, I want you to bring my new cable network to everyone you can. The only thing is, there's a snag in my plan. You get no money to content create, so I'll leave you to it. You've got a lot on your plate. For two years he toiled with Popeye and Droopy Dog, but then perhaps in a stupor and stinking of grog, an idea emerged to take old properties, redo all the voices as weird comedies. It's risky he knew it, but it was cheap as could be, and if it was just 15 minutes on super late night TV, nobody would care if it succeeded or failed, advertisers for dick pills won't jump ship and bail, he'll use footage from Space Ghost and Oscar interviews and then put them together to make something new. So now when Denzel says he liked the look and direction, it seems like Space Ghost asked him about his erection. So he put it on air and a cult soon emerged to the point where it seemed Mike was on the verge of getting some money for his grand designs, but he worked on side projects for the prime time. Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack weren't created by him, but he had their back. It wasn't until the millennium turn that Lazar received the chance he had earned. A programming block when kids were in bed and some bucks for the ideas that bounced round in his head. He postmodernized this, recontextualized that, and when he was done, the ratings were maxed. For barely a budget, men 18 to 34 were practically begging and screaming for more. And now with real dollars, animators and writers, he could keep making money but quit pulling all-nighters. So here's to Mike Lazo, a postmodern example, who knows that just 15 minutes is far more than ample.